The Game Awards nominations were announced recently, but there was a category missing that I feel that they should add, and that is Scummiest Game Publisher. When you think of that, you're probably considering companies like EA, Ubisoft, Activision Blizzard when they weren't being absorbed by Microsoft, who you could probably throw in that pile as well. They've had plenty of blunders. But for me personally, I've got Warner Brothers games right at the top. They are greedy, they are money hungry, and they don't even know when to enjoy a good thing, celebrate it, expand on that. Warner Brothers are known for gaming series that extend beyond the medium. So think Harry Potter, Batman, any of those DC games, that universe. And then they do have other series like Mortal Kombat as well. But I bring them up today because apparently, despite the success of a Hogwarts Legacy, for instance, that did extremely well earlier in the year, many people were sceptical. Not just because it's a Warner Brothers game, but because games based on existing IPs, they very much are a mixed bag a lot of the time. You get something like a Marvel's Avengers, a total joke, a total cash grab. But you do occasionally get an Arkham City, which turns out really well. There was a lot of passion put into that whole series, which is sadly gone seemingly given that Rocksteady, who worked on the Arkham games, are now stuck working on Suicide Squad. Exhibit A, an example of Warner Brothers pivoting to live service, wasting eight years of dead time to bring out something that nobody wants. Hogwarts Legacy, it seemed like it might be the start of a good thing. You get a pretty decent single-player game. I don't think anyone will be giving it Game of the Year, but it does what it does pretty well. It might have a, a pretty standard open world, the gameplay's pretty simple, but it puts you in the shoes of a, a student at a magic school. It gets that pretty right. People were pretty impressed, and I think that people did see it as the start of what's to come, what can be improved, can we get more Hogwarts games, Harry Potter, titles. Maybe we can do this for Lord of the Rings as well, given that Warner Brothers do make games in that universe. They were responsible for Shadow of Mordor, for instance, and then the shambles Shadow of War that came out of it. That's Exhibit B for live service, where they tried to put heaps of microtransactions in a single-player game, only removing them years later after Backlash, after they'd already made their money. They took the cash and then pretended everything was all right. It doesn't seem like that that might be the case with Hogwarts Legacy. Maybe a standard sequel is being made. It's going to be similar to the original, single-player focused, no microtransactions. But I am starting to worry about the Hogwarts Legacy sequel because I was really hoping we were just going to get maybe more of the same, refine it, expand on the content, the RPG elements. But knowing Warner Brothers and what their CEO has been saying recently, it sounds like we might get live service elements because Warner Brothers are never happy with a good thing, a very solid thing. They always want more and I think they see Hogwarts Legacy as a missed opportunity where lots of people bought it but the game isn't filled with microtransactions. They can't keep fleecing people, getting them to spend money over time rather than be content that they've made a good solid product that people like. They just can't help themselves from reaching into people's pockets. So maybe it comes out and it's the exception, but Warner Brothers have made clear that they're going in this live service direction even harder than they've done before. So Warner Brothers CEO, David Laslav, he's come out during an earnings call and has outlined the company's plans to transform its biggest gaming franchises from traditional console and PC releases into always online, always on live service games. Laslab, the CEO, referred to some of Warner Brothers' billion dollar gaming properties, such as Game of Thrones. Didn't realize that was a billion dollar gaming property. Sadly, the mobile games must make a lot of money because the last PC console centric Game of Thrones title I remember was that Telltale one. Never got around to it. I assumed it was a, a walking simulator. I heard it was okay. They mention Harry Potter, of course, Batman, Mortal Kombat, and their focus, apparently, is on transforming these big franchises from being largely console and PC-based, with three, four-year release cycles, so kind of like releasing a, a single-player game, three years later releasing a new one. They want to get away from that and instead focus on 
always on game playthrough. Some of our favorite buzzwords, live service, multi-platform, and free-to-play extensions. Hallelujah, that is exactly what I like to hear, that all the games that I like, the single-player experiences, the stories, narrative, characters, in-depth gameplay, fuck all of that because we can fire all the level designers, hire monetization experts, and really hone in on these strengths of ours. That's what Warner Brothers seemingly want to do, and it's Funny that there's a trailer here for Suicide Squad, because that is just a real example of how to get it totally wrong. I don't think I've seen a studio fall from grace so quickly and so obviously. Even with Bioware, I remember post the Mass Effect Andromeda controversy, where they were somewhat at rock bottom. Fans were losing faith for sure, but Anthem was announced and you still had these bio drones who were convinced Oh, they're going to fix everything. This is the game we've been waiting for. Keep an open mind, guys. It doesn't matter it's online. They're making the game they want to make. We should really give them that chance. People were saying that. It obviously released and it was a complete shambles. They totally blew it. But it wasn't till the wheels actually fell off that people disappeared and no longer cared about Bioware. With Rocksteady and Suicide Squad, and to give you the context, Rocksteady developed Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, Arkham Knight. You may have your preferences, but they're all considered pretty decent games, especially given they are based off existing IPs. I mentioned earlier that's really good, often that is stuffed up. But they're all pretty decent titles in that open world action space. Seeing the Suicide Squad trailer reactions, gameplay reactions, it's universally negative. Barely anyone is willing to give them a chance. And I think it's not just because of Rocksteady. It's just we've seen this script before. We've seen it with Marvel's Avengers. I mentioned Anthem. There's countless examples of single-player studios pivoting away, not really focusing on their strengths, and developing something that's just really obviously for money and nothing else. All of the passion is gone. We saw it very recently with Redfall. And if you looked behind the scenes... What happened with Redfall is you had a studio known for producing quality immersive sims. Prey, Dishonored, great single player experiences. They had a lot of fans. And then the money people said, they're not selling as much as we'd like. We want that gravy train. We want people constantly spending. So they told this studio to start working on whatever was popular at the time. Was it looter shooters? Some sort of live service element. They were determined to follow that rainbow to the pot of gold. But the problem is, the people who worked at Arcane, who were now working on Redfall, they were often not people who had skills in the live service realm. They went to work at Arcane because they care about level design, immersive sims, in-depth gameplay. Now they're being told to follow trends, what's popular with the market right now when it comes to Fortnite or whatever else people are playing. And those people quit. You have to hire new people. And even if they are experienced devs, they haven't worked at Arcane before. They've got to learn the tools, understand how everything works at this studio. And you can put the Arcane Studios logo on the box, but it's essentially a brand new team. None of the same people work there anymore. It's all on name alone. It's the same for Rocksteady and Suicide Squad. They haven't released a game since Arkham Knight. That was eight years ago. It's going to be getting on nine years when this game comes out next year. I can't imagine it's the same people who worked on Arkham City, Arkham Knight, because they were good games. They were clearly made by passionate people who not only respected the source material, they respected the fans. They were determined to give us a good game that lived up to the Batman name. Kevin Conroy, Mark Hamill, getting those original guys back from the animated series. They did it justice. Suicide Squad is anything but, and no one is having it. Warner Brothers were clearly hoping to leech off the good name of Arkham, the good name of Rocksteady, but gamers aren't having it anymore. You might trick people on mobile. That might have worked for your Game of Thrones mobile games. But people on PC, even on consoles as well, they have seen this coming. They've seen it coming from a mile away. It's not going to work. Warner Brothers strategy, they seem to, like a lot of publishers, try and take mobile phone game strategies and apply them to PC and so on. 
It doesn't work because we've been here from the start. We've seen gaming evolve. The mobile gamers came to gaming late. And it's not to belittle them, it's just that mobile phone games are a totally different experience. They resemble gambling. I think in some cases they appeal to people who like gambling. They like those little dopamine hits. But a, a game on PC, a single player title like a Hogwarts Legacy, it appeals to a totally different group of people who are looking for something that's more like a good movie or a nice book. It's an immersive experience. Just because video games are one industry doesn't really mean that mobile games have anything in common with their PC counterparts, for instance. But Warner Brothers don't want to hear it. They're convinced they can apply all the same practices to both, make all the money. They're finally going to learn, I reckon, that you just can't do it. Five years ago, I probably would have been more Doomer. I would have expected gamers to gobble everything up that they were selling. That's not really happening anymore. We've had a pretty good year for single-player games, despite years ago. I think it was someone at EA who tried to tell us, oh, gamers, they don't care about single-player anymore. They only want live service. Get the fuck out of here. That is EA. EA want that. They want gamers to be interested in single-player. They just see consumers as inconveniencing them because they're not following suit. They want to buy the next single-player game, Baldur's Gate 3, Elden Ring, Tears of the Kingdom, they're just unhappy that no one wants to buy Suicide Squad in Warner Brothers case. And they go on to say, ultimately we want to drive engagement and monetization of longer cycles and at higher levels. All that really means is you just want to spend the money once, you want to develop one game and then just keep grifting people, keep on reaching into their pocket, you don't want to have to keep developing new content. They mentioned free to play extensions earlier. Anytime I see that, I lose all interest. Whenever I see a game that's free to play, I know it's going to be half-baked and they're not going to have put enough time into it because investors putting money into a free-to-play game where there's no guaranteed box price, you know they're going to be running scared, which is why these games are always half-baked. They're always not finished. They rely on getting the players now, get them spending money on the store before they'll actually commit to releasing and, and really polishing a good product. That's happening anyway in some cases for single player, but it's three times as bad with free to play. With Warner Brothers, the reason I've always hated them is I used to be a fan of Lord of the Rings Online. And if you're familiar with that game, it was extremely true to the books originally. It wasn't copying the movies. It was based on the books and had some fantastic stories, locations. It was really well done in its first few years. Warner Brothers bought the company. They forced them to turn it into a free-to-play amusement park with a totally immersion-breaking store that you would access in-game. It would have teleports where instead of going to a quest and doing it, you buy a blue orb, press a button, and it teleports you there and back. It was a total joke. It ruined it for anyone who was really serious about that game. And I'm super worried they're going to be doing it to their other IPs as well. I mentioned Hogwarts Legacy. Hopefully because it was so successful, they leave their grubby paws off it. And they just let that studio expand, make another good title, improve on the first. But I'm not really convinced that'll be the case. I do believe it's going to have live service elements. It's sad. This is just Warner Brothers. They fuck everything up. They're going to do it with Batman as well, Suicide Squad. I don't need a crystal ball to predict this. They're going to charge people full price, I imagine, on release. A few months later, it'll go the way of a Marvel's Avengers or similar titles where they make it free to play. They promise that they're going to keep supporting the game for 10 years. And as soon as they're not happy with engagement numbers, they'll slowly disappear. There'll be no new content. They might even put Rocksteady out to pasture if they're not happy because they're probably going to go a decade without releasing anything of genuine quality. And someone like Warner Brothers, a business like that, they never take accountability. They'll blame it on the studio. I know it sounds negative, but this is just one publisher. We've got examples of other publishers starting to do better. I know I shat on Microsoft early on, but at least they've got some RPG studios that are making single-player games. And we might get a few all right ones out of that. There's so many great indie studios doing good things. It's important to support them like we have with the Baldur's Gate 3. Other games, even if they're not quite that quality, if they're still good, people should buy them. I know we talk about game sales sometimes, being a patient gamer and, and not just buying on release. But it is good to do that sometimes, to support a game when it comes out if you know it's good. Because unless these developers 
are seeing the right sales numbers will lose those games. I try and put my money where my mouth is. If I think a game's good, I will buy it. If I think it's terrible, I won't buy it. Voting with our wallets is the only thing we can do. Warner Brothers are failing, but hopefully going into next year, we have some other good releases like we have this time around. So thanks so much for listening. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.